and welcome back to the finish line and uh, episode three of our Cheltenham Festival. Andy Poe's betting tips. Hi again. Hello. No Tom. No Tom again. If you watched the last video, you know Tom is on his honeymoon. Um, and he will be back Wednesday, two weeks. I'm surprised they didn't give us a selection or two. I was waiting for a text today <coughs> saying this is what I'm putting up, blah, blah, blah. Who's going to take this down now? He's meant to be looking after all this. And we figured out what Tom was on about last week with the other videos. It was a video we done in the summer where you put up a cardery. I put up Gallop and the Champs. And I don't know who Tom put up. Quilixios, maybe. Was it Quilixios? It could have been. That sounds right. Armand Moran. Oh, God. Don't start. Anyway, this is episode three of our Cheltenham Festival and the host videos, and we're going to keep it. Sh- well, I'm going to say keep it short and sweet, but we'll try to talk about a bit more of the markets after we give our selections. David O'Keefe, selection number three. I'm going all the way to the Spud Race, the Albert Bartlett, which is usually the lesser of the three um, novice grade one hurdles. You so, it down or something? Yeah, I'm. I don't know if I can. Is this the thing that was in the right, bumper? I, which I, I, I was happy. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, God. I was happy to see my mate Mozzie win today because I'm pretty sure the other horse is better than he is. Um, it's let's be clear about it for the Gavin Cromwell stable in the Albert Bartlett. His bumper form was quite strong. He was behind. The Cheltenham bumper winner, and then he was behind the Punchestown bumper winner. Yes. Um, seemed to lack a bit of a gear of those two horses. Wasn't quite as fast. I had but he was traveling in my head altogether. <laughs> he was traveling pretty well uh, in the Sir Gerhard race, and uh, he pulled away from him then in the end. <clears throat> but he's 33 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett. <clears throat> Obviously, Bar the year that Monkfish and Latest Exhibition ran that race, the, the kind of cream rose to the top. Um, any other year, it seems to go to a, a kind of a battle hardened horse that maybe has had that's ran in a point to point five runs that um, season, five runs, a lot of runs. Uh, I'd expect to see him a good bit of over hurdles. Um, maybe not win a two mile maiden hurdle, it might be too fast for him, but like I'm sure he'll be entering in those good races. Uh, Cromwell wasn't afraid to put him up against the better bumper horses so I think he a little bit of speed he might have the he won't lack anything for um, racing anyway mm-hmm. he goes to Albert Bartlett you get turned to 3-1 <coughs> that's me cool I am going for one in the Ballymore <sighs> going for another Bob Bob Oligar 2.0 journey with me Won the exact same bumper Bob Oliver won last year, and in fact, probably won it more impressively. Uh, trained by Henry the Bromhead, and the thing I know people gonna say, "Oh, another Henry the Bromhead horse." <laughs> when you see a Henry the Bromhead horse win a bumper like that, take notes. Never ever are their horses ready to run bumpers. They hate running them in bumpers. Um, but if they're working the house down and <coughs> they need to just get them out on the track and they do that, Bob done it the year before. This fella, we were out there uh, not last week, the week before, and they had to change the lead horse with him twice because no one could keep up with him. He looked well in the gallops. He, he just was, looked well in general. And this was just, he's a nice horse. This was just a, a normal Saturday morning hat canter around the uh, gallops and literally not nothing could keep up with him. And he wasn't pulling, he wasn't dragging, he was just going about his business. He looked very, very nice, and he looked like he's had to grow a lot. He's currently 14 to 1 for the the Ballymore, so he's not gone missing in the markers. Uh look, go Kilcro is a clear four to one favourite in it. Then you start a hard at eight, then it's <coughs> down to journey with me at 14s. To me, 14 to 1 is big because I can see this fella. Popping away, winning his maiden hurdle, price the shortening into tens, win a list at a graded race somewhere. 
run the grade one. He'll go up against Kilcross or somewhere like that, probably at Christmas time. And if he puts it up to him or even beats him, you're looking at another clear favor for the Ballymore. So I think 14 run right now, I would take it. I have taken it. And he is my second selection. I'm very excited to see what this fella can do. Um, and it's not just because he's trained by Henry. Shock. I backed him this after we left. Did you? Yeah, did you? So, you know, if he backs a Henry horse, by just seeing a horse in the gallop, it's saying something. He's very imposing physical specimen. Mm. <coughs> he stands out a mile on the gallop. <laughs> and I know that people say looks aren't everything, but he's started showing already what he can do. I he did, yeah. pissed in in that bumper. I was going through some prices. I, I was actually winning a few pounds, so I, I put it back in. Good investment. Well done. I invested it onto a journey with me. He's one now I'll have. I'll pop away now a little bit every week on him. So that's my second one, a journey with me. On the last video, our British Champions weekend, we were just going through the Gold Cup, talking about how how it lacked in strength and depth. Now Dave probably found one at a decent price. So we might pick a part one. I know this is last minute. We haven't even talked about it. Pick one that you want to pick apart. The RSA. RSA. Brown Advisory. Da, 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 da. Brown Advisory. Novice Chase. Gallop in the shop. Sixes. Brave Man's Games. Eight. My Drogo. Tens. Bob. Tens. Classical Dream. Tens. Appreciate it. Twelves. Vanillier. Fourteens. Gallier de Mesnil. 16s, Mr. Incredible 16s, James the Barry, 20s, who is going chasing? Is he? Yeah. And 20 to 1, bigger the rest. What don't you like about this? I oh, know, you just asked me to pick okay. one. Okay. Galton the Champ, worthy favourite right now? Uh, I don't think so, to be honest. Why? Because I just haven't seen him jump. And I don't. I, I know, but on. I don't know any of these things. <clears throat> I think some of them will be way too short. Uh, I suppose over hurdles, yeah. <clears throat> When you take into consideration... The back end of last season, but he was terrible at the start of the season. He was. It took him a while to get get it, like, grow up. His jumping would worry me. I've said it, I've said it all through the summer. I said it at the end. I, 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 um, I backed him at Punchestown. But he's, like, walloping hurdles. I backed him at Cheltenham, well, he, did, he didn't do that at Cheltenham, which is the thing. Yeah. It might have just been a one-off thing. He jumped unbelievably well at Cheltenham. But, yeah, he did clatter one <laughs> or two at Punchestown. But uh, look, you know horses are going over fences. They respect them more. Once he hits one, he probably won't hit it again. Uh, it's a, it's always a high race because a lot of the ho horses are um, quite close. And look, if you like look last year, Monkfish was beaten latest exhibition, but then he wasn't great at Cheltenham. It shows that there's not really all that much, you know, separating them. And it's a very hard race on horses as mm -hmm. well, like. Uh, monkfish win it and then you can't come out and like back it up a bunch of times. Yeah. So you need a really tough horse to win it. I have two backed in it. I think um I'm you're nearly I'm really sure you get about twenty five to ones on uh Gaird de Manil. He rated about eight pounds lower I think than Gallop and the Champ but he's a dual grade one winner. Uh, by the end of last season he did start to look a bit slow. He was beaten into second by Bob. I don't think that's any um, anything to be ashamed of. Mm. In that race as well, he probably didn't get the best ride. I think Townend was riding all that well at Cheltenham last year, to be honest. Um, but he probably didn't get the best. He got kind of boxed in, and he, he beat Brave Man's game fairly well in the end. Um, I think going up and triple suit him. And I have a speculative one on Grand Parody. I put him up in the... Horses to mm -hmm. follow. I'm pretty sure he go chasing, and he would have been in favour for the race that Gallop and the Champ won, only for he got pulled out of Cheltenham. Mm. <coughs> he looks a big chasing type. <coughs> the way I'm looking, the, look, I've I've galloping backed at thirty threes and forties early in the season after he won that. He he's slashing out into sixes after what he done at Punchestown. Do I think he's worthy favourite? Yes, on what he's done, he's. I don't think there should be as much disparity between himself and Galliard and Menil on form. That's why I'm back Galliard. 
He's like three times the price. Like. I'd have Galliard closer to Brave Man's game without a yep. shadow of a doubt. Brave Man's game is living on a sentence that Paul Nichols said last year. This is the next them, and this hell is as good as them, or whatever yeah. he said. You'd have to imagine Gay Gayar is going to go chasing. Like, my Drogo is not going to run on it. Classical Dream might stay over hurdles. Bob, Bob is going, is going to, to the marsh. marsh. Appreciate it. Probably go to the marsh or the Arca. So, Gayar, like, Gayar shouldn't be that price. No. That's what we're, we're trying to pick through it. As you said, my Drogo is not going to Cheltenham, apparently, according to Dan Skelton, he's not going. Um, Brave Man's game, I still don't get it. Ever since Paul said this is he's better than Denman, he's just shot that horse in the foot already. No better horse than Denman. No. Bob is not going to go here. Clask and Dream, I can see staying over hurdles. Appreciate a lot of go. Uh, Arkel or Marsh. Van Ilya, four mile or horse. He's the slowest fucking tar. Yeah, I, I have him back for the four mile. Do you? Yeah, I do it. Galliard, then you're looking at him 16. 16 to 1. If you're looking for, as they say, value bet, that's going to be shorter come. If he gets there in one piece, he'll be more than half the price if he's half decent over, over fences. Same with probably James the Birdie. Streets of Dying. There's a four mile horse as well. The rest of them are much of muchness. You have bloody Barbados box suits. Fucking useless. Yeah, it's terrible. He'd win yeah. a few races in England. Gen- gentleman's game. Who could be a fly? Who could improve big time for offence? You've Gars the so- Who the hell is that? Gars the So. Uh, I've never heard of him. Oh, uh, you, you would. You, you know if you saw. Do we? Yeah. Uh, I seen your twenty. Okay. The marker right now, I don't think is right. I think it's the right favors. I think Galliard should be at least the same price as Brave Man's game. Brave Man's game was after being shortened, as we said in the last video. On the back of having a school in session around market raising, if it even was market raising, and you have three the next three in the betting who probably won't end up going there. I get to see what you get in 25s. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Why wouldn't you back him at that price? So it could be a Willie Morland's benefit race. This could be, but yeah, that is us. We finish on that and we will say we are back on sunday where we will be going over everything that happened uh the british champions day and hopefully one or two nice performances will come out from over the weekend so until sunday have a good rest of the week keep safe and we'll see you live eight o'clock again back for more talking points on youtube so stay safe and enjoy the rest